Okay, well, um, we have resulted to doing a taped video of your questions and then posting it. I really apologize. I was very excited to do the uh, live Q&A, so hopefully we can get that going again in the future. So my uh, lovely assistant here is going to read the questions and I will give the answers. All right, first question. So you've worked with extremely stunning slash hunky people and done your fair share of intimate scenes. Who has been your absolute favorite and absolute worst? Fess up, girl. Wow, that's a pretty potent first question. Um, let me see. It's really hard to say. Um, you know, you always hope that you have good chemistry with people um, when you're working with them. Some you naturally have better chemistry with than others, just like uh, when you date someone, sometimes you gel better with one person than the other. Um, so I, I think overall, um, I just really hope that they're up for it. I think that's the most important thing. Like you really want someone who's equally gonna go for it like you are, or at least like I do, um, cause I, I tend to go for it. So um, I think that's the most important aspect. Do you plan to shoot in a French movie? Are you, you are a part of a famous American actresses that we like in France. Oh. And would you be delighted to get this opportunity to work with a French director? Ah, that's a beautiful question. Well, first, thank you very much. Um, you know, ironically, I was just thinking this morning uh, how much I would love to do a foreign European film. Um, so, yes, I would love to work with a French filmmaker. You have so many great talents there in France. Um, it's such a beautiful country. I love going there. Um, Paris is just one of the most stunning cities in the world and I had the pleasure of um, promoting Painkiller Jane, my TV series there, uh, with my father. Um, and we went to the Gerard de Mer Film Festival uh, where I sat on the panel, which was really fun. So uh, yes, I would love to do a French film. Right, from John Roberts. Hi, do you have any favorite acting roles, whether it was in movies, TV shows during your career? John Roberts, thank you. You've been um, such a supportive uh, fan. Appreciate it. Um, do I have any, uh, what was it? Favorite acting roles. Favorite acting roles. You know, I think the best is yet to come for me, in all honesty. Um, I have to say, I really enjoyed collaborating with my father on Fighting for Freedom. That was a really special experience. We got to uh, shoot it in the town where I grew up and on the farm where I grew up and uh, really immortalize the farm in all of its glory. Uh, and that was a very special story that was near and dear to my heart. So, uh, and getting to work with the legendary Bruce Dern, I mean, he's just an incredible actor and human being and that was a real joy for me. Um, so I loved Fighting for Freedom experience, um, but truthfully, uh, I think the best is yet to come. So we have some exciting things in store with Trio Entertainment, my new production company that I'm launching. So look out. So Jason Backus asks, if they ever made a sequel to Terminator Genesis, would you be the TX again if called on? You know, I would love to reprise my role as TX. Uh, TX is this wonderfully iconic female badass cyborg and um, it was a real testament I think to myself to the level of training that I did beforehand and preparation uh, for the role um, and you know the the Olympics was going on when I was auditioning for that job and I had many auditions I think I had like eight auditions and I really felt like I was doing my own Olympics and um, I would love to enter my own personal Olympics again and uh, play TX. Carl Nelmus asks, Painkiller Jane is one of my favorite series. Very Yay. underrated in my humble opinion. Thank if you. If offered the chance, would you go back to the role? Yeah, you know what? I gotta say, I absolutely loved shooting Painkiller Jane. Um, Jimmy Palmiotti, as many of you know, who created the character and the comic book, <clears throat> and who is now my partner in Trio Entertainment, 
um, has become a great friend and he's an incredible talent and I loved that character. I thought she was so rich in, um, you know, the one thing that she showed on the external side, um, but she yet had a lot of depth and was really struggling with this ability to heal, but yet be impervious to pain. So, um, I also loved being the co-exec producer on that show. It was an incredible opportunity for me to learn how to produce television um, and wear two hats at once. You know, do 10 pages of dialogue a day and then also look at location tapes and, I mean, acting audition tapes for other characters and deciding on different locations and just a whole gamut of responsibilities that I had. And, you know, I'm a workhorse and I love to work, so I love the challenge. Danny Stewart asks, what were your memories of working on Mortal Kombat Conquest? Ah, Mortal Kombat. That was my foray into the acting world. Uh, not acting world, the action world. Um, you know, Mortal Kombat was, was special because it was the first um, series regular lead that I had. Um, so it really prepped me for um, churning out 22 episodes um, back to back to back, learning dialogue after dialogue after dialogue, um, and also having a physical awareness um, in a martial arts realm that was different and unique for me. I have a dance background, um, so learning the choreography for martial arts was not too dissimilar uh, from dance. However, the body positioning and everything was uh, entirely different. So um, that was a really good groundbreaking experience for me um, on learning how to punch and kick and hopefully make it look passable on screen. <laughs> so Shavir Ahmed asks, how did you feel when they asked you to co-star with Arnold as TX in Terminator 3? Uh, that was um, really, really one of my greatest joys uh, when I got that news, until of course having my son now. Uh, but I, I will never forget that moment when I got the job. I was actually on horseback um, with a couple of friends riding, I'm an equestrian, and I got the call that my whole life was going to change and, and I got this role, I got this job. Um, and uh, I remember uh, Jonathan Mostow, the director, telling me, you know, you're never going to be able to pump your gas uh, again in the same way, you know, doing these kind of mundane things because you're going to, your whole life's about to change and everybody's going to know who you are. So, you know, I don't always get recognized when I pump my gas, just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> but to be pitted against male iconic figure of cinema history, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, I just wanted to make sure that I got as absolutely fit as possible um, so that I, I looked like I had a chance competing next to him. Monica Andrea says, Hi Chris, I'm Monica from Argentina. Hi I was, Monica. I was your admin in your forums long ago. Tell us more about your new production company, please. Yes, uh, Trio Entertainment um, is really been the inception of uh, being inspired, uh, firstly, by my father's writing, you know, who wrote Fighting for Freedom, and we collaborated on that. Um, and he's just got such a great body of works that I wanted to get them out there. And I also wanted to create the roles that I wanted and uh, be able to produce the films and work with the people that I wanted to work with and just have more overall creative control. Um, so I thought, who's a wonderful person that, that potentially would want to partner with me? And that's when I came up with the idea of Jimmy Palmiotti, who also has uh, such an extensive amount of intellectual property um, that would be wonderful to see on the screen. Um, such great graphic novels that he's written through the years. Um, and then it comes to uh, my wonderful fiance, Jonathan Bates, who works in finance, and he heard me talking about this company. And uh, he said, you know, I think I might have 
a unique financial infrastructure uh, for you to help raise capital for the company and the brand. So this is really the marathon um, company for me. You know, I don't want this to be a sprint, you know, just one movie and that's it. Like this is gonna be a brand, this is gonna be something big, um, not only with our body of films and television that we wanna produce, but also um, hopefully in acquisitions down the road. James Oler asks, will Body of Deceit ever be released? Been waiting for years. You know, you and me both. I, uh, I really like the film. I gotta say, when I read the script, uh, it was uh, a very kind of dark, sexy, film noir-esque um, love triangle between two women and a man. And, uh, you know, everybody knows that I enjoy working with men and women on screen and especially in a love triangle. So I thought uh, this had a really unique twist and um, I really enjoyed shooting it. We shot it in Malta and we had some interesting actors uh, and hopefully it will get released. I hear that it will. Um, I guess they had some, some technical issues um, with the project, but that are getting um, that are getting figured out. So yes, I, I hope that it's getting released very soon. That's what I hear, but I don't have an exact date for you yet. So Siddhant Roy from India says, love from India, what's your favorite dish? I Indian, I'm, assu I'm assuming you mean Indian dish. You know, I gotta say, uh, Indian is such, India is such an incredible country. I had the pleasure of shooting a movie there um, in 2000 called Air Panic. Um, I turned 21 there, which is a pretty big age here to turn in the US. And I was just amazed by the culture and the people and the way of life and the smells and the colors and everything that is India, you know, and camels in the streets and the and cows adorned with beautiful painted horns and bells and um, the buses adorned with all kinds of colors and you know, it was just an incredible journey and uh, I got to see the Taj Mahal as well, which was uh, really special and uh, I guess one of the oldest trees on earth that was near there. I believe, um, and uh, you know, I really enjoyed the Indian food. I, I certainly did. So um, I have to say, I'm a big fan of the mango lassi, um, as far as Mexican or as a, so, sorry Indian food goes. Um, but uh, favorite food overall, I don't know. It's tricky. Uh, it really depends what I'm in the mood for. Um, I've recently become a vegetarian again for a number of reasons, um, and I really enjoy that diet. So we have, I can't read his name, I think it's in Arabic, so okay. it says, Hi Kristana, who inspired you to name your son Thor? Ah, that's a great question. Well, as many of you know, I am uh, of Norwegian descent, and um, I actually did my, uh, my saliva DNA testing and it came out that I am 86% Scandinavian and Jonathan, my fiance, Thor's father, did his DNA te testing, ancestry testing, and he came back surprisingly at 24% Scandinavian. Um, and the woman who introduced us is Icelandic um, and I had a great grandfather named Thor, and I enjoy Norse mythology. So really, we thought Thor was kind of the only choice of names for our son. So he suits it. You know, he's been such a wonderful fighter through all that he's overcome in his short ten and a half months of life. Going along with that, Dima San asks, "How is Thor?" You know, he's doing great. He's really thriving. Um, we're, we're very, very proud of his progress. Um, yeah, in the beginning, it was uh, extremely difficult. It was worse than we thought it would be. And uh, the doctors actually kind of, after a while, let on really how grim the, the situation was. Um, so his recovery is, is truly miraculous. Um, 
you know, I, I feel blessed to have been selected to be his mother. I feel like he's uh, such a, a teacher for me. I've learned so much about life and what really matters and what's important and myself. Um, and, um, you know, the type of character it takes to be a mother. Um, so I'm really happy to report that uh, he's doing better than ever. Thanks for asking. Shannon Rodriguez asks, what's your favorite food? Yeah, favorite food, man, it really depends, I think, on my, on my mood. Um, but I, I tend to overall really eat healthily. I like eating healthily. Um, I feel good when I eat healthily. Um, I like foods that uh, feel good when you eat them and give you lots of energy. Um, but I, you know, I grew up on a fruit farm. I eat a lot of fruit. Um, so I would have to say, you know, cherries and apples have got to be pretty high up on the list of favorites. <laughs> Danny Stewart asks, what are some of your favorite movies? Uh, favorite movies. Okay, so I really like good war movies, uh, like Apocalypse Now, Full Metal Jacket. Those are right up there on my list. Um, I like epic dramas, which this one also had a war background, um, but The English Patient has always been a favorite film of mine. Um, Helen Mirren is my favorite actress. I watch everything and anything with Helen Mirren. I would absolutely love to work with her someday. Um, comedies, I really like Sideways. I, I just, I can watch that film over and over and over again and laugh just as hard as the first time. <laughs> just laugh thinking about it. Um, and, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's, those are, those are kind of up there in my favorites. So Milan asks, working with Schwarzenegger, how was that, especially off screen? You know, Ar Arnold is, I learned so much by working with him. He's got this larger than life persona. He's very gracious with his fans. Um, and he's so incredibly skilled at the fight sequences, I just tried to watch and observe and, uh, you know, not hit the uh, $30 million man in the face and make any mistakes. <laughs> um, but, you know, I really touring around him and promoting the film felt like I was touring with royalty. I mean, it really did. He, uh, he just commands such incredible presence um, that uh, it was wonderful to be around. It was very infectious. So Jared Johnston asks, as an actress, is there anything that you've learned slash picked up over the years that you wish you'd known when you first started out? Hmm, that is a great question. I'd say probably everything. <laughs> I mean, God, you know, you can never go back in time, but, but if you could, um, I think that's, I really got to think about this one. Um, I think I would tell myself to not be scared of really, really feeling the depth of your emotionality, you know, um, I love playing roles that have a lot of grit to them um, and emotion. I think in my personal life, I've been a little afraid of that. Um, so maybe I use the characters to really explore that side of myself. Um, but if I could go back, I think I'd, I'd probably say, you know, it's okay. Just feel however you are going to feel and in your life. And, um, you know, you don't always have to put up a, a strong exterior. Um, because I really, I really love the vulnerability and the kind of wounded aspect that is uh, a part of, I believe, everyone in life. Michelle Jody asks, 
uh, start, well, she says, sorry for the Facebook technical difficulties. Thank you. <laughs> How is everything with you? Kristana, any new amazing projects coming up that we should know about? Yeah, life is, life is great, I have to say. Um, <clears throat> I am just so grateful um, for my health and um, having my beautiful son and partner in my life and a supportive family. Um, thank you for asking. And um, as far as new and exciting projects go, yes, there are some. Um, there's one that's going to be coming up. We're not quite ready to announce it yet, um, but definitely you'll be seeing more, um, I will say, in the suspense thriller action genre. So just uh, keep checking my social media for updates. Um, let's see. We're getting to the end of the question. All right. Uh, do you like soccer? And if so, what's your favorite team? Well, you know, <clears throat> I really hate to disappoint you on this one, but I'm, I'm not actually a soccer fan. Um, you know, I know soccer is, is so huge and uh, around the world, and I think it's great that it's really kind of bridged the gap um, of, of communication and way of life in, in many, many countries, and it's getting really popular here in the U.S. as well. But it, through and through, I'm an American, and I really like baseball. You know, I'm a, I'm a big Chicago Cubs fan, and uh, I'm very, very excited. I am going to see them play the Dodgers on the 26th of May, and I'm going to do this uh, very cool um, MLB uh, uh, show during the game, which I'll talk about on my social media. Um, but I'm very excited to see them and, and hopefully meet a couple of the players. So, um, you know, I'll have to uh, get back to you when I start watching some soccer games. <laughs> James Oler asks, will you ever be at Fan Expo Dallas or Texas Frightmare Weekend again? Loved seeing you there and it's been a while. Ah, oh, well, thank you. You know, I just actually spoke to um, a booker of mine for the conventions and we spoke of Dallas. So likely I will be there again and, and maybe even next year. Debbie Duncan asks, if you had to be in one of today's drama, sh drama shows, which would it be and why? Ah, that's another great question. I really liked the show Vinyl on HBO that only had one season. Um, I, you know, one of those amazing, great, wonderful shows that I thought really wasn't given enough of a chance. Honestly, I liked it. Um, almost as much as The Sopranos, which is saying a lot for me because that is my all-time favorite TV show. And I think really single-handedly revolutionized um, the way we watch TV today. Um, the, the type of characters, the pacing, the rawness of it, the grittiness of it. Um, so uh, I would, yeah, I would definitely say Vinyl. And I also like Narcos, um, also a great show. There weren't many roles for, for blonde Americans. I think there was only one. <laughs> but uh, I also really liked that show, too. Cindy Honan asks, when Black Rose was filmed a couple years ago, why did it take so long to get to American audiences? You know, Cindy, it's a very good question. I, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, but the good news is, is that here it is. And... Um, the American audiences can now actually see it, and we're getting this nice uh, theatrical release and uh, VOD on uh, May 2nd. Um, so, you know, sometimes these things take a while. Honestly, this business, after, you know, over two decades of being in it, it still mystifies me. I really don't know the answer. So, um, you just gotta really keep plugging away and trying your best and, um, and hope that your projects uh, get seen by the masses. Last question. Ray okay. Garza says, what is the best way to get your autograph? And he says, P.S. Love your work. Stay amazing. Aw, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, the best way to get my autograph uh, is honestly in person. You know, um, I'm going to be try, try to be better about 
letting people know what events I'm going to attend and I'm happy to sign autographs uh, at the events um, and uh, you know or at conventions I, I, I do quite a few all over the world and definitely want to publicize my appearances so um, that's really the best way and I and I love meeting fans and I, it means so so much and I guess this will be my closing statement here since that was the last question last question right mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I really can't thank you all enough for your ongoing support um, for my career through the years. Um, it's been 24 years since my first uh, TV gig, and um, it really touches me when I meet some people and they know events, I mean, they know projects that I've done um, way in the beginning. And sometimes I think they're relatively obscure, but people have really followed me through the years. Um, and that's why, in part, I, I really do this. I love portraying humanity. Um, I always really try to bring the most reality um, to my characters and... and um, it really affects me when I see how it's touched all of you. Um, so thank you so, so much for your support um, and belief and well wishes uh, for Thor when he was going through all of his difficulties. So it means a lot. So thank you all very much.